How do we handle this use case in Prolaborate? We came up with something called sections. So this was the first feature that I can remember that we implemented in Prolaborate. And what it was trying to do was we should have a way to just pick and choose packages or sub-packages or a part of the model and drag it into my project. And that package or those packages will eventually become the complete view. So everything else that's not included in this selection will be out of my user's view. They will never get to see it in this project. In this Prolaborate project, you could select individual packages or you could select the entire route, whatever ways you're convenient. You could just drag and drop and define these sections. And the second feature that we were looking at is we should have a very granular access control mechanism. Enterprise architecture goes way beyond just having a read view of contents. We need to allow people to collaborate. We need to allow people to edit a selected information if needed. And it can't be just at a package level. We wanted this level of granularity at an element level, or even further, we wanted it at an attribute level. So in the next section, we'll see how the simplification will be taking the next gear when we go to an attribute level simplification. But in access controls, Prolaborate solves the problem of again, showing and hiding information to the users with access control. So amongst the sections that we previously defined, you can still slice and dice and just show information that are relevant to the user groups. You can have permissions assigned for users or user groups, and only those users or user groups that have permission to a package will be able to see them in their viewport. The diagrams or elements or the packages from anywhere that a user does not have permission will not appear in his view portal. This is another layer of control that we could have to make sure the people or the users get to see exactly what they intend to see. And by the way of linking to an Active Directory group or a SAML group, what we are able to achieve is to do this configuration once. Just connect your Active Directory group to your access permission control, and everyone who is added or removed to that Active Directory group will be getting the same access control that we have set here. So in that way, you don't really have to do the user management twice as well. That's the core use case. How do we cater to the different roles and different users and just show them what's relevant? Simpler form just given to them in a platter. So they click, they see the details, nothing more. It's as if opening a document and reading a table with just the information that they want. That's the user experience we wanted to imitate, but on a live model. So what we are talking about is not static, we are talking about connecting to a live EA model and just sharing the information that we would otherwise publish in a Word document. So this form designer of Prolaborate shows you how for every single artifact, or technically, we call them the stereotype in EA, we can customize the user's view or form. For example, for BPMN 2.0 activity, I can say how my form should look like, and these are the technology or the BPMN 2.0 attributes, and I can add or remove them at my will. And even for those attributes that I have added, I can add a help text to make sure my end user understands what it means. For example, ad hoc ordering could mean nothing to my end user. If you are really using it in your process models, you really have to tell them what it is. So you can give them a tooltip to indicate what it is. And furthermore, I can say this particular attribute is going to be read-only no matter what. Even if a user has right access to this and Prolaborate, he can't edit this neither can he edit the notes. So I can set which attributes he can edit or not. And the second thing I said is to give it to them in a very easy to access platter. When a non-technical user just logs in, he or she doesn't get to see the hierarchy of packages or hundreds of diagrams in front of them. All they get to see is that minimal set of diagrams that he or she is expected to view, review, and share feedback on. So that's the view that we can let a user land on. And then when they click on one of those processes, they get a very neat interface in their web browsers. Again like this. As you could see, it's a web browser, you don't have to have any installations. And what you see is not just sharing it in Web HTML Publish can share it in a web browser. That's not what we are talking about. You're talking about simplifying the information and making it comprehensible by anyone, even with very little technical knowledge. Imagine a CSR. Imagine someone in the field doing some task if you want to share your processes to them. That's the solution we are talking about. And as you could see, when a process is clicked, you get to see the discussions in it. We'll see about, we'll look at that a bit later. But you could also see the minimal form that we have defined for it. 
so it just shows the notes related to it and the author and the type of it. And then you also see the applications connected to it. Again, this is the form that I have put together for this BPMN 2.0 activity type, so it's customizable. It could be role-specific as well. And just a step further, you could see that the form shows which fields can be edited, which fields can be edited, and there is a tooltip that indicates what it exactly means. And then you also can, if the users are a bit inquisitive, they want to understand what is this connected to, what is an artifact connected to. They could even see the traceability information, or they could even see the other diagrams where this is used. But we wouldn't consider all these as our primary, primary use cases. It is this showing the information that he or she would really like to see just by clicking on something. So that's what we facilitate with this form designer. So we have just seen the first two use cases, which is like, you know, the better focus. There is a lot of data in your EA models. We have hundreds of tag values. We have interrelations. We have the details or the traceability information model through connectors. So the tag values are the key part of models. If you ask me, what is the most important aspect of my model that I create? I wouldn't say diagrams. It's the relationships and the tag values. That's the most important things. But hey, that's still data. You know, how do we really make use of the data? You need to have some way for people to do their analysis, their due diligence. How do we do that? That's our third use case. In the past, we've been exporting data from EA into Excels and then using some BI dashboards or some visualization tools to be able to drive these dashboards. Most of you might have done it, but we wanted to have an integrated view in which we could just take the information from EA again, live information from EA, and do all that's necessary to let people drive their decisions based on that. So you could see that, you know, your models very easily can have multi-layer relationships. It's very important information, as you could see from motivation to business application, information technology layers. But to make sense of it, you need to know how to look at it. You need to know how to look at the traceability window. You need to know how to do the insert related elements or whatever. But there are better ways, again, there are ways to just target the non-technical users. I'm emphasizing this again and again, because we like Prolaborate's whole idea is to take the models to the people who are not modelers. If your team is only comprised of modelers, I don't think Prolaborate has a need or I mean, has a use case there. This, if you intend to take your model to a team that's not a modeling team, that's where Prolaborate comes into picture. So, we can have personalized dashboards. So these dashboards can again be personalized to a role, to a group, or to even an individual user. What's there in those personalized dashboards? If you take a look at this, I've got an application inventory. I've got a list of applications and the applications, each of them has a variety of tag values which are really business data, like, you know, these are important data that we would have collected from a CMDB system or an external application inventory. But what's the use of it? I can drive real-time dashboards like this. So, this is driven by the data from EA. And what this gives me is a real-time application portfolio management dashboard that has all the charts that are understood by the users who really want to consume it. So, if someone wants to understand the highly critical applications that are web-based, they could just hover over it or even click on it to get a list of applications that match their criteria. Similarly, let's consider a business analysis person or a business analyst. You have the requirements in the model. Again, as you can see, they're buried deep down in a location within the EA model. But you have all the information for a modeler or a BA who is using EA to create all the information. But how do I really take this to a user who doesn't have an understanding of enterprise architecture? I can simply define a business analysis dashboard that presents the details in a straightforward manner. As you can see, there's a dashboard that categorizes requirements into could have, must have, should have, and won't have, and with just a click, the user will see a list with all the necessary details. Everything is incorporated seamlessly. Clicking here will display a list, and clicking on a list item will reveal the properties already defined. Thus, the user will only see the information I want them to see. This is all part of the user experience. Additionally, Prolaborate aims to be the platform that consolidates information from multiple tools. Therefore, you can even view JIRA items here in real time allowing the BA to understand what's happening on the other side. 
The third use case addresses how to convert the data accumulated in EA over several months or even years of modeling efforts into something appealing to users who are not familiar with EA. So we have the heat maps and tree maps and landscape diagrams. All of these are auto-generated based on some predefined configurations. And when I say predefined configurations, I'm not talking about SQL queries or scripts or anything like that. You can just say my meta model is A to B to C, and then the landscape will be auto-generated based on that. I'm just saying the whole idea of all these charts is to just make sure the connectors, the tag values, and all those things that we do in EA are really taken to the users at the right, in the right level of details that they can comprehend and understand. So it's really intuitive. So, this is just three levels of information shown here. And just by clicking on these things, people can switch to. It's a multi-level nested pie, and it's intuitive. It's an interactive one. And people could just click to understand the interdependencies. With just a click, you can dive deeper into the layers of information, understanding dependencies like never before. It's intuitive. It puts the power of insights right at your fingertips. With tag values driven by enterprise architecture, you're not just seeing data, you're unlocking its full potential. And there are various other charts like the roadmaps, which are again, live. You could just set a start date and end date for an application or for a project. And you could generate a roadmap, which is regularly updated. You could have your bubble chart to do your, you know, if you wanna understand the business significance of your portfolio or your application. So there are a variety of things that we have done and each one has been driven by actual use case from a customer.